Hi, I am Sonal Katyal, the Communications Officer of the National Center for Biological Sciences and I wish you all a very, very happy National Science Day. So I am here at one of the laboratory buildings at NCBS. We call these SLCs or Southern Laboratories. And today I am at a special lab. This is a theory lab and uh, they do some experiments as well. The PI is Dr. Hi. Sean. Chakrabarti and we have a lovely student with us who will be showing us around today. So let's begin our tour. So, so many labs. Fancy stuff I know, right? So, hello Doc. Oh. Hello Sean. That's, hello, that's the PI of the lab we are visiting. So, thank you for letting us in your, no, how welcome, people call welcome. it, ivory time. Welcome to our lab. So this is the southern lab complex. Uh, <laughs> and we are a new lab at the Simon Center for the Study of Living Machines at NCBS. Um, so our lab here is interested in um, a wide variety of problems that are related to cell proliferation. Um, and so what we, what we try to study is how single cells divide. So oh. we watch single cells dividing. Wow. And, uh, you can actually see them? You can actually see them under the live under the microscope. Okay. And the interesting thing is that when single cells divide, they leave behind all kinds of surprising patterns okay. in their lineages. So for example, sister cells, cousin cells, they tend to be more similar. And so we ask broad questions such as why does this happen? And if we can understand why this happens, can we understand something about, for example, how cancer cells develop resistance to drugs? Okay. Or, for example, how do single cells tell time in our body? Oh, nice. Um, then, for example, we're also thinking of questions like, how do the cycles of day and night, um, how do they affect the way cells divide? When we, And we're trying to understand this from the level of single cells. Okay. And, um, what we do, as you'll find out from some of my students, is that we actually start by bringing in ideas from statistical physics, uh, machine learning, um, a lot of biostatistics. So we, we approach these problems from a theoretical perspective. Okay. But then we take it to the lab. We do experiments. We do a bunch of microscopy. We look at cells. So does the theory happen first or the experiment? Usually in our lab, the theory happens first. Okay. The ideas come from the theory. And then we go to the lab, and then we come back to the theory once again. And okay. in the grander picture, hopefully one day we'll be able to also take this to the clinic. So in fact, mm -hmm. some of my students are working on trying to push these fundamental ideas on cell proliferation and okay. see if it can help, for example, in coming up with better cancer cure strategies oh, for, in the clinic. That's yeah. Sounds yeah. great. It's like all, like physics as well. Like you theory, you have Absolutely. a hypothesis and then you experiment. Absolutely. Right? So it's a it's a combination of physics, mathematics, computer science, um, experimental biology, and so on. Right? Oh. And um, feel free to walk around the lab. Sure. Um, look at the instruments. Talk to my students. Okay. Try to understand great. some of the theory, some of the experiments, and great. have fun. Thank you. Uh, Thank yeah, you, Sean. So we have one student working here. Hi. Hi. It's Tanya, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, Tanya. Tanya. I'm a student at Shaun Lab. And uh, currently I'm working on something very interesting. Like how you know, we have a day and night cycle. We call it the circadian rhythm. We wake up in the morning, then we do our daily routine. Right. And then we go to sleep at night. Like this, almost all the cells in our body perform a cyclical uh, <laughs> sequence of events and it repeats after every 24 hours. Oh wow, now, so my, even they have like this disciplined living. Yeah, yeah, oh, they wow. really do. And my project is to ask that how these single cells, which are like very simple entities, know the time of the day. And it is essential for them to communicate with the environment. Oh now, wow. Now I'll show you. So like, some coding, right? Yeah, like how, how Sean said that we do the theory first, we develop it. And we get predictions from our codes. And then we uh, use experiments to verify whether we are going in the right direction. Okay, so now, even biologists need to do like a lot of theory, right? Yeah, I always yeah. imagine like stuff happening, you know, on that end. 
But you have lots happening here, right? I have a lot happening here. So These what are code very... is it like? Which language do you all have to use? Uh, we use a mixture of language. This is a Python code. We also use R. We use Java. We use multiple languages. Now I'll show you around the bench, the workstation where we do our experiments. So when do you actually start learning these languages? Is it a part of your bachelor's and master's? It is really uh, flexible. Different people start at different times. I started very early in my bachelor's, but people can pick it up any time they want. Wow! So I'll show you some instruments. Here, here are the pipettes. We Ooh, use this, this is pretty to, cool. Yeah, we use this to do very precise volume measurements. This is a. Um, How can I can I try? What, yeah, yeah, what sure. What is this? Sure. It looks like so. Here you have the numbers. You can rotate this and set the numbers to your desired numbers. What do numbers. these numbers suggest? So I... this is the highest capacity of this is one ml, and you can. So how much I want to put pour out from it, right? Pour yeah, out from yeah, it. yeah. So yeah. when like, and, so, and where do you pour something? What what goes inside this? So you use the tips. You okay. fit it here, and you use a liquid. You uh, use it to pull up liquids of desired volumes. Oh, so you pull up liquids. Yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, nice. Great. Now, Great. Uh, these are our solutions, and uh, these are okay. our chemicals that we use for our experiments. Ooh. Here we have different machines. What is this machine? This is a centrifuge, which basically Can separates. Can I open it? Yeah, sure. Uh, How do you open it? What are you using the centrifuge for? So we separate uh, two things which are mixed in a liquid form. We separate it out. So is centrifuge like separating it by like? Uh... Yeah. We we separate two materials which are mixed together but in a liquid form. So it uses that principle of uh, gravity to okay. separate. Them. Okay. Separate. Okay. Them. Yeah, here we have other. Uh, so machines. they go here, like you open it and. Yeah, uh, yeah, we open it and then we put it in and then we have to shut okay. it to sure. let it run. Now I will show you some. What's this? This is a. This is called a thermocycler. Basically, we can uh, set it such that it uh, changes the temperature of the solution uh, at different precise intervals. Oh, and so like I if I need something at thirty degrees after ten minutes, so it will do that. Yeah, it goes it goes oh. up to like hundred, hundred twenty degrees, and it can uh, maintain that temperature for a precise amount of time, which is required for our uh, reactions to happen. Great. Okay. Nice. So this is this is your uh, lab this setup, right? This is our right? setup. Yeah. This oh. is our lab and is this a refrigerator? No, this no. is more of an incubator. This is at thirty-seven degrees. Which is our body temperature, so okay. our cells and uh, our enzymes they work the best at this temperature. That's wow. why we maintain this temperature. Okay, great. So you use you, you have to store cells that you're working on yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. This cells, bacteria. Okay. 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 Yeah. You Ooh. see, there are these bacterial plates. Wow. We are growing bacteria inside this. Okay. So the bacteria is actually functioning at the same temperature as we do, right? Uh, it depends from bacteria to bacteria. Okay. Not all bacteria survive at the same temperature. Like some bacteria will survive in extreme cold, some in extreme weather, extreme hot weather, some in extreme acidity, and etc. Now, hmm. I will take it to our teacher. Okay, we need to do like remove our shoes and everything. We have to remove our shoes, socks, wash your hands, and then and okay. Off. So uh, yes. then we add our cleaning products. Hello, we have another scientist here. That's another student from Shan's lab, Anjum, right? Yeah, hi, I'm Anjum. I'm a PhD student here at Shan's lab. Yeah, oh. and this is our TC room. Oh, nice. TC as in tissue culture. Yes, yeah, tissue culture. So, basically so many machines. Mammalian cells. And uh, you need to keep the environment very clean. Uh, you need to keep the environment very clean. Uh, you need to keep the environment very clean. The environment very clean. You need to keep 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 the environment very clean. You need to ke
and okay, this is closed, film, right? yeah so we can just open it up and we start something called the air flow mm -hmm. which is gently towards the outside so that nothing goes in okay and that's where we do all the work okay uh, cells generally grow in this thing called the incubator it's like the same thing we saw outside right no so that yeah so it's basically it gives the you know the temperature and the conditions to the cell for it to grow okay so Would you like to see some cells? Yeah, that would be great. All right. So as I said, sterility is important. So whenever okay. we touch anything, we alcohol wipe our hands. Hash Seventy percent ethanol. Okay. Hashtag lab rules. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Again, a fancy thing, which I thought was actually a fridge, but it's not. Yeah. So, so this is basically a flask. This is on uh, what we grow. So the cells will be attached to the base of the flask. You can't see anything because right now it's all closed. So this base? Yeah, on this bottom, like inside, the cells are growing, and this red thing here is basically the media. So you can't see the cells. They are that tiny. Not with naked eye. They are very tiny. Wow. But you can see them under the scope. Wow, it's almost like. Yeah, and this red color thing, which really reminds me of pomegranate juice. Yeah. <laughs> All the wasps, all the wasps, yeah. has all the nutrients that are required by the cells to grow. Awesome. So, like, we eat food, they need stuff that is in this solution. Okay. So now you'll be setting this up under the microscope. Yes. Okay. Here you go. Is is this a special type of microscope? No, it's a very simple uh, light microscope. So the light will fall here. Okay. This is the objective. Okay. It basically magnifies the image. Okay. And we can see from this thing all the eyes. Sure. So it's already focused. You can come and have a look. Let's try. Okay, let's try. Let's try. Uh, if you can see it with the phone. Ooh. So these like these tiny things are the cells. So they are, they generally they are attached to the surface, and they are they grow in like all different shapes, which you can see. Some are elongated, some are triangular, and yeah. So these are something called the mouse embryonic. Wow. Cells. So these are growing actually here. No, these are growing on the base of the flask. So here. Okay, so I'm seeing. Okay, 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 yeah. got it. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So this so, is um the human cell, right? I'm trying to focus so I can share it with our viewers. Yeah. Cells. So these are not human cells. These are mouse embryonic cells, but they are a very good system to work with. Because mouse is a mammal, right? Yeah. So there's like something in like a Y kind of shape. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Y shape, all kinds of shapes. So as I said, they attach to the surface and grow. So mm -hmm. wherever they get the space, they basically spread out. That's why oh. they have an arbitrary shape. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. That's so, great. I'll just quickly put this back in, and then we can get going and see some exciting experiments that we do. Okay, over. great. So I leave from here, right? Yeah. So you have to press that door very often. Okay, I'm out from the notification room. I'll get my shoes. So this is how a major lab looks like. Very excited. Um, let's find our friends again and see what else we can see. So we'll go back to this station. Okay, I'm now lost. Where exactly we had to go? So we are back to Tanya. Hi, Hi Tanya. Hello. Now I. I just uh, spied on you and I saw you were seeing some pictures. Would you yeah. like to share those with our viewers? Yeah, these are the results of our experiment. I'll show you something that I just saw under the microscope. You right? saw the cells. Those are living cells. Okay. Then we process these cells because we wanted to count these number of molecules in each cell. Oh. So we basically collected like each molecules. molecule, like single molecule. Yeah, each single molecule in every cell. So, so in which one is Can you describe what I'm seeing? Here? Yeah, sure. So here in blue, you see the nucleus of the cell where okay. our DNA and genetic material is stored. And in this, these yellow dots, you see tiny, tiny. Yeah. Each dot represents a single molecule. Can you imagine wow. a single molecule? 
so th- this is like um, you know seeing a picture of the, the universe and these are like yeah. tiny stars yeah, we and... actually call it the starry night in our lab <laughs> but how do you count them it's like almost impossible no we have machine learning methods which can detect these spots oh. and give us the number back so yeah. that's where the theory and machine learning and coding comes in right yeah yeah this is another way we bring theory in to okay. analysis to do the analysis of these experiments right yeah So it's basically you use theory to first know what you want to work on, then you try that through experiments, then you come back, and then you are using machine learning theory and everything to understand your finding yeah. style. You can call it like sandwiched between the experiment is sandwiched between, between theory, theory and computation. So, oh great! So is there like some? Can we see something? How? These are more cells. These are the uh, same molecules, but they are dyed with different colors. Okay. 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 So nucleus takes up pretty much big space, right? Yeah, it does. It does. But that varies from one cell type to another cell type. Okay. Nice. So, do you have some like graphs and all that you work with? Yes, I can show you some graphs. So, that's Anjum back to her station. Thank you for showing us how a uh, tissue culture lab works, right? So these these things like these are produced by softwares, right? Yeah, these are produced by our codes. You can see these uh these repetitive oscillations or uh, cyclic events after every twenty four hour. Oh, that okay. is what we are working at now. so this this represent how things are changing in the cell after every 24 hours so do we, is there like a repetitive pattern that we observe uh there is a repetitive pattern you can see that it peaks and then falls again peaks and falls again Great. but cell is a very tiny space so it is very noisy inside the cell okay that's pretty cool thank you so much and i had great fun understanding about that and uh, as i know so your work might eventually lead to finding uh, therapies or healthcare tools for cancer right yeah yeah, yeah. definitely that's uh, that's a long term goal that we want to translate these studies into right. into some clinical application oh that's nice i mean it's uh, good to know that you know uh, when as outside the world of science when we see it we think you know things just come like a drug or therapy just comes but it has to start with smaller things like you count you have to count molecules and all to yeah, eventually yeah. find a therapy so many a times you are not aware of you know what all efforts and things go on but today we got the chance to see that in shawn's lab so thank you all of you thank you tanya thank you anjum and that will be me signing off we have another live at 2 pm and we'll be watching something going on with zebrafish so do not miss and i'll see you again at 2 pm bye